Hello and welcome to the video. This is a quick video on the things to check if your multi-rotor or quadcopter is flipping over when you try and take off. Now I have made videos about this in the past but it seems the way that Google and YouTube algorithms work mean that people aren't finding it because for ages I didn't get any questions at all and I'm starting to get questions about it again. Now this particular quad here is one that I built in my last quadcopter building for beginners series. I'll put the link down below. And in that series, I go through every single individual step of how to go from a bag of bits into something like this that flies beautifully. And if you follow along with a series like that and don't skip bits, then you'll get to the end and you'll have exactly the same experience. However, it is easy when you are inexperienced to make one of four or five errors that will result in the quad when you try and take off just flipping over and it's quite a scary thing when it happens. So for those of you that have been wondering what you need to check about this, let me go on the bench and take you through the four or five things that it regularly is when I'm helping people here. So the most common issue I tend to find is that the motors are in the wrong places and what I mean by that is that whether it's I now is on this quad beta flight or something like Ardu pilot, then the way it flies the quad is the same. If it feels the quadcopter is dipping forward and you haven't asked it to do that, then what it'll do is it'll speed up the front two motors and slow down the rear to get the quad back to straight and level. However, if you have this motor here and this motor here, that means that the two motors that's going to speed up are actually on this side. So it's just going to flip over. So having the motors in the right location wired to your ESC and your flight controller in the right way is critically important. Now I've got this one plugged into the computer. So here in the mixer tab, uh, but it might be the motor tab. And again, check out the individual series. I'll link them below so you can go and check out how I set it up. You can see here that this quad is set as a quad X and this front motor here is motor four, this is motor two, this is motor three, this is motor one. So it's one, two, three, four. Now these all have to rotate in a very specific way. We'll get onto those in a minute because that's another common problem. But you can see here that that's the way that the multi-rotor is expecting all the motors to be in position. So if the nose dips, because this is the front, you can see here that's going to increase the power on motors two and four and reduce the amount the power on three and one. Now we can actually do motor tests and we have something called the mixer wizard in things like iNav. This is how they do it in iNav. But in Betaflight, there's also the ability to power each of the motors separately. Never have your props on if you're going to plug the battery in for safety. And you can confirm that this is absolutely how you have it set spin up each motor individually and make sure that when motor two is spinning it's this motor here that's turning etc etc that is the very first thing i would check it is the single most common issue that i see and that it's very easy to accidentally get that mixed up if you're not doing all of your pre-flight checks and checking that you have the motors wired and everything's all tickety-boo the next one that's kind of related to that ish is if you go into the setup tab, then in here, if I lift the nose of the quad, you will see the nose of the quad. You can't really see it very well. I'll have to turn it around kind of on the graphic. There we go. Uh, the nose of the quad is lifting on the model on the screen. That is really important. By default, there is one orientation that the flight controller has to face and that's forward. You can mount it in other orientations and tell the flight control software that that's what you've done. So it knows that it's not pointing forward, but it has kind of the same effect of you not having the motors in the right location. Because if it thinks that it's actually falling to the left, but in fact it's falling forwards, it's going to try and correct it with the wrong set of motors and that's gonna cause it to flip over. The next most common issue is the props are on either backwards or in the wrong places. You'll notice here that if I go back into the mixer tab here in iNav, but it might be the motors tab or something in um, things like Betaflight and others, you'll see here that there is a little circle showing you which orientation the props are supposed to rotate. And this, for example, is motor two. You can see here that it's designed so that it's going to rotate in that direction. And the leading edge of the prop is higher than the back edge of the prop because it's going to cut air and force thrust in a downward direction. 
you need to make sure that that is the right way round. And what you'll tend to find is you'll find that the props are the same in opposite corners. So this prop and this prop are the same. And if we go on the, the diagram, you can see that's counterclockwise. That is counterclockwise. Where four and one in this particular INAV configuration setup, these two here are the same, and they're both going in a clockwise direction. So that's really important too. Make sure that the props are on in the right direction for the way they're turning around and make sure you haven't put them on upside down it's sometimes easy to do when you're quite new most props will have some kind of writing or embossing on that is always facing up not the other way around so triple check that if you've accidentally put on one of the props upside down so it isn't producing enough thrust it's easy for the other prop on the other side to overwhelm it and flip the quad over Last couple of things are the ones that I see, but they are much rarer than those ones I've already covered. If you go into the radio or receiver tab, you'll see here that this is how it should be set up. So you have the aileron, elevator, rudder and throttle. The aileron, elevator, rudder are all at 1500 and the throttle is at 885. The middle channel positions on your radio should always default to 1500. Now at the moment, I haven't got my radio connected, which is why it's in failsafe mode. But when you have your radio connected, and again, be super careful about this kind of stuff, never power your model with the props installed. That's just asking for trouble. Make sure that all those middle channel values are at 1500. And also make sure that things like when you move the throttle, it's actually the throttle channel that moves, etc. Check it for your aileron, elevator and rudder. You can change the order of that. There are different orders by default and just double check that that's the case. If your radio is set wrong and is telling the quad that it wants to fly to the left, right, forwards or backwards as you throttle up, it'll try and do that. And you might be thinking that that's an error, but it's just your radio isn't set up properly. The last one is if we go into the outputs tab on something like iNav, but it's usually going to be in the motors on other things. You can see here that the flight controller is talking to the ESCs, the speed controllers that are going to run these motors via something called DSHOT 300. If it's DSHOT 150, DSHOT 300 or DSHOT 600 with modern quads, then you're not going to have to do something called ESC calibration. If you're using things like standard, and those kind of things, uh, then you know what? You probably have to go through a calibration routine. And what that does is basically teaches all the ESCs what the low throttle position is and also what the high throttle position is so that they can figure that out so that all of the motors have the same ranges. If you are flying a quad where one or two of the motors uh, it has a much lower resolution or hasn't been calibrated properly or thinks that a quarter throttle is zero throttle. What can happen is the other motors will start before that last motor or two that's on those ESCs that haven't calibrated and the whole thing will kind of try and flip over and it'll be a disaster. The quad is expecting that when you arm it, all the motors start and run at exactly the same speed. Again, if you're using something like a D-Shot protocol, I would recommend if your ESC support it, turn that on, use that. That will stop that from happening. If you are using PWM or standard, then you're going to have to go through a calibration routine. See my build videos for how to do that. So hopefully, having now checked all those things that I've just gone through, you will have found the thing that you've done wrong. By far the most common one is going to be to have the motors connected to the wrong outputs on your ESC or your flight controller, or potentially blades turning the wrong way, or one of the blades mounted upside down. It's very easy to do when you are distracted. If you are still struggling, do let me know, pop a comment down below. Uh, but I would recommend if you are not sure about this stuff, the best thing to do is to go and check out things like the build series I've linked to below where I go through every single individual step, don't cut anything out. And in two or three videos, you know exactly how to build one of these things and for it to work every time. Thank you for watching my video. Check out the playlist and adding Payless 360 to your search terms will help you find my content. If you haven't done so already, please hit the like and subscribe button. It helps a lot. You can support the time I spend here answering questions and helping others by using the links in the video description.